I'm Jonathan Stevens with EveryPoint, and I have the new DJI Action 2 camera. I love it. It's the size of an egg, weighs less than an egg, and it can attach to your shirt using magnets, just like that. Now I have myself a wearable camera that's 4K and wide angle lens. And since I can't see what's on the screen because now it's attached to me, I actually have an iPhone app that I can see everything it's seen. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna walk around this building and I'm gonna see what I can scan using just this action camera and then throw it through with every point engine and see what we get. So here we go. Okay, that didn't go quite as planned. Although this little camera appears to have a nice big lens, I found out that it doesn't do well in low light and that's a big deal. And I'm gonna dive into that in just a minute on my computer to show you why that was such an issue. But when you look at this camera, if you just look at it closely, it looks like it has a big camera lens in it. But in reality, it's, it's smaller than an iPhone 13 Pro lens. And if I look at it compared to an iPhone 12 Pro lens, it's about the same size. And then you start to think, well, in the ultra wide, it does pretty good in low light. It should be similar. But in fact, although they have about the same field of view, they're not the same at all. And I found that this is much more useful in ultra wide, even though I can't plug it to my shirt like that and make it a wearable camera. So I'm gonna dive in a little bit on my PC, like I said, and see why this didn't turn out as I expected. Let's check it out. Okay, so here are the results. I uh, brought them up in Cloud Compare. And at first glance, they look not great. I would have expected a little bit more filled in. Let's just zoom in a little bit. If I, if I get even closer, I notice that a lot of the ground is missing and where I did capture it. Let me just pump up these pixels a little bit. They're, they're scattered, they're noisy. If I get close in on this wall, um, I really pushed the maximum point coverage I could, but even the walls, they, they're all blobby and bumpy, and you can see a lot of noise in the ground. And, and I wouldn't perhaps want to use this as a good data set for some sort of as-built modeling. Um, it might get me some basic reconnaissance of where things are, but it's not great. And I thought all this brick, that, that would turn out great. That was a 4K video, walked around, it should all look pretty good. You can see large gaps here. Um, I did pick up the trees. Um, that's all this white stuff is, is the cloud and the tree kind of mixing together. You know, I, I kind of have an idea of what this area is, but this is just not the quality I was expecting to walk around. Um, there was this cool bucket lift as well that I walked around a couple times and it it just doesn't look good. It, it, it's not very good. Okay, so now I'm looking at it where I have my walking path and the images I used to generate this uh, model. And you can see I walked all over the place. All these little green uh, symbols are basically camera frames that were extracted from the video that I walked around and took. And so uh, you can see I saw a lot of things more than once. I would have expected just some better results than this. So I decided to jump in a little bit closer and look at the quality of the images because typically when you have a problem like this, the source is the imagery. So let's just look at one of these random images and you look at it and you're like, okay, it's, it's not terrible, but it was dark. And so there's not a lot of clarity. Let me just jump over to this building. I thought I'd have lots of texture on this building here. And if I zoom in on this photo, yeah, look at that. The brick, it's full of noise. And why would this be full of noise? most likely it's the fact that this camera cannot handle low light situations at all. And because of that, it pumps up the ISO. And when you have a lot of ISO, you have a lot of noise. And so although it is eight megapixel images from a 4K video, not all pixels are usable when you got a lot of noise in it. So I am able to see some geometry when I'm further out here. I can tell what everything is. But when you get closer in and you want those details on the building, I'm just not getting them. Uh, let's look at another spot. So that was that was a brick over there. In this area, I was even more under trees. Um, that's zoomed in, but even still, look at that. It's It looks grainy. I can flip through a few of these pictures and yeah, 
everything looks looks pretty terrible. I, I was not expecting that. I was expecting a much more clear picture. So let's just take another look at another video I was taking that day on the camera. And again, it may be a little brighter. It wasn't quite ready to rain, but if I zoom in, I see the brick, but again, it's it's not very good. And in fact, as you get towards the edges of the camera, it's, it's, it tends to be worse. Um, it's a little clear in the middle, but even on an object close to the camera, being my hand in that camera, uh, it's, it's, it's not very sharp. So now I see why I'm not getting good detail. Now this is a still from my iPhone 13 Pro ultra wide camera. And again, it's not super sharp, but this brick was much further away when I took the video and it was still more clear. I feel like the, there's more definition between the different brick. Um, you don't see the amount of noise. And this day was partly cloudy. It was a little brighter, but again, not a super bright day, but the iPhone 13 Pro is much better at handling these lower light situations. Um, so it's leading me to believe that this camera just won't work very well if it's not really bright out. So now we've established that this camera is no good in low light. However, I figured not all is lost. It's not a terrible camera. I just had to figure out what were the best settings to get a useful capture out of it. So I played with the menus a bit and determined that again, I could use the time-lapse mode, but that had its own issues. Uh, here's some pictures on the screen from time-lapse mode. It actually keeps an open video as you walk around. So again, you're stuck with eight megapixels and everything was pretty blurry. It almost did like a long exposure. And I also decided I can take some stills and the stills turned out great. So I walked around taking some stills, taking pictures as I move around, but I was also able to still use the video. And so to get a usable capture using the video, I had to turn off the image stabilization. I found that that was doing something. I'm not sure what, but it felt like the images were a little clear. I also went on a sunnier day, so that helped. And I still kept it in the normal de-warped uh, version of the video output. Everything I've done so far, I did in uh, de-warped in the camera itself. I didn't rely on us to de-warp it later. Um, and that keeps the field of view approximately the same as the iPhone 13 Pro. So with that, let's check out what I was able to scan. One thing I did notice on this is that the screen is terrible for a control system. There is icons all around it and it's hard to know which swipe and gesture brings up which menu. And that was kind of a big deal when I was out there because I would waste quite a bit of battery. And I also found out that you kind of need the second portion. The second portion has a screen. So if I take off the magnetic clip from my chest, it clips together like this. And now I got, I got two screens and the screen is really a selfie screen for if I want to take a selfie video. Uh, it also adds more battery and mics, but that second battery, that was pretty crucial. Also, I couldn't get data off of this camera unless I plugged in the base to my PC. You can't go directly from this part of the camera to your PC. And that's another big deal. So you're kind of stuck with that or the battery bank that you can buy to make this a more usable camera. So while I'll be using this further on for more 3D capturing, uh, probably not. I'll probably use it here and there for just some novelty. It'll be great if I want to do a point of view shot of me capturing some 3D photography using my iPhone or a different type of camera. Because again, I can take it and I can put it right here on my shirt and then I can take some cool, you know, awesome views. So while I recommend getting this camera for 3D capture, Probably not if you want to get it for something else and want to try it out with every point that might be something you could do But I would look around. There's much better options. That being said, 
Your best wide angle lens so far is still an iPhone 13 Pro or an iPhone 12 Pro for that matter. And just taking a video straight on this, it's about the same field of view. So if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It means a lot to us and we know what kind of content you guys wanna see in the future. I plan to get many more cameras and test them out, 6K cameras, drone cameras, um, and some 360 cameras, see how they all work with every point. And if you follow along, I'll have some more great content for you. Thanks and see you in the next video.